Good morning. I want to say good morning to everyone. It is indeed a blessing. Make sure I got everything right. It is indeed a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. Uh, one more time, giving honor to the great God of our salvation, uh, to his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, uh, to the Holy Ghost, uh, the strength of our lives. Uh, we just thank God. Oh, I'm glad that you all are popping on and watching. Uh, that let me that lets me know that I'm connected. Amen. Now I preach to the cockroaches and to the rats, but I need somebody else uh, today. I've been doing that with them all week, and uh, so we're thankful that I, I'm seeing feedback on the screen. Uh, to the God of our salvation, Him who made us and uh, saved us and delivered us, and has kept us through it all. Uh, speaking of keeping us through it, He kept us through His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, him who who volunteered to come and redeem a sinful man uh, from our wicked ways. Amen. The Bible says that the Lord was going to wipe out everything and everybody. Uh, and then Noah found uh, grace and favor with God. And God let us continue to live out on this earth. Praise God for Jesus Christ. Uh, and to the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the power that worked through Jesus Christ, the word of God, uh, to walk these dusty roads and tell us that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Uh, to my fellow yoke women and yoke men in the gospel, to uh, the uh, deacons and officers of the church, to this waiting congregation out there somewhere, and certainly to my great friendship family, whom God has used uh, to promote the gospel in this way on this day. Amen. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to uh, getting back to the church house. Amen. The officers and I met this week and uh, conference call, and uh, we're looking at targeting um, August the 1st, which is actually the first Sunday in August. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue to monitor uh, Elder Ellis, who works in the, who's a registered nurse for the VA. He works in the medical field, and he gave us some good news with numbers, and uh, vacation is coming up May through July, and uh, we should, that it may tend to spike, uh, but August the 1st should give us a good indication on what it's going to be. So let's just keep praying and just uh, keep asking the Lord to give us wisdom uh, and understanding that only comes from him. So we are looking forward to August the 1st, Greater Friendship, of returning back to church. I bet the pastor won't have to beg nobody to come to church no more. Ooh-wee. Praise the Lord. I'm about to give me another sermon. Amen. God bless you and we love you. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, if you would turn to uh, Job, the 14th chapter, and the first verse, and then locate, uh, uh, that's pretty much the middle of your Bible there, uh, the books of poetry, and then go to James towards the uh, towards the back of of uh, the New Testament, James four and fourteen, uh, Job fourteen and one, and James four and fourteen. Amen. Uh, for Elder uh, Williams and Reverend Warner and Reverend uh, Browning, those of you who was at uh, uh, Melissa's son uh, Macarius home going on. Uh, last Sunday, uh, last Saturday, you just bear with me. God, I tell you what, when God gave me this message, Greater Friendship needs to hear this message. Pastor Gilbert needs to hear this message. All the world needs to hear this message. Amen. Uh, and you, So you're there. I'm going to say that you're there. Okay. Job, Job, the 14th chapter, first verse, and then James, the fourth chapter, the 14th verse, and it reads as such. Uh, Man that is born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. James 4th chapter 14 verse says, uh, Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away? 
Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we just come right now in the name of Jesus Christ, asking you to, oh God, first of all, acknowledging you as the almighty God, the everlasting God, the everywhere at the same time God, the all-powerful God, and the all-knowing God, the smartest God in the whole universe. Lord, we come asking for forgiveness of our sins as we forgive those who trespassed against us like we've trespassed against you. And if you are willing to forgive us, Lord, we are not only willing, but we do forgive those who have sinned against us. Thank you for this day. Thank you for life. Thank you for everything from our mother's womb up until this appointed time. Now, Father God, allow your word through the power of your Holy Spirit to turn us from our way to your way. Open our ears that we may hear, our eyes that we may see, and our legs that we may walk in that which we hear and see that comes from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, we thank you. Amen. Amen. So, 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 uh, Job, uh, Job uh, 14, uh, 1 says, man that is born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you today uh, about you don't have long. Uh, 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 when when, when when the attention getters got several of them today, uh, and I think you can relate to this. Those of us who have cars and drive them all week, the tank of gas that we start with uh, don't seem to last long. Uh, those of us who have jobs and, and they give us 30 minutes for lunch or an hour for lunch, whatever they give us, uh, once we hit the clock or take the time to go to lunch, uh, that 30 minutes or an hour is not long. Uh, those of us who have jobs and who are in school, uh, when the weekend comes, uh, and, and I know it's Saturday and Sunday, Friday evening and Saturday and Sunday, but I want you to know, and you know for this for a fact, it goes off of fast. Why? Because it's not long. Not only that, have you ever been cooking uh, downstairs and I've burned up a many of Sister Gilbert pots? Uh, before she went to heaven. I, I'm still burning pots, Sister Gil, but I'm getting better and better at it. When you are downstairs and you're, or you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and, and, and you're watching the, your boiling eggs and you're watching the rice cook, uh, if you just sit there and watch the rice, it, it just takes forever. But if you go upstairs, if you leave out of the kitchen, it don't take long for that pot to burn. Ooh. We, I want you to know that when you have children uh, from the time that they're born uh, un, until the time that, that they smell their top lip and they think they, they know more than you, it don't take long. Amen. And today, God wants us to know you may be in your mother's womb and you may be 21 and you may be 100, but whatever the number is, you don't have long. Why? Because, because the Bible says that one day with God in his court in his courts is like a thousand years. And that in a thousand years in his court is like one day. You don't have long. Amen. Let's look at this. What, uh, what God is telling us today is, is the surety of a quick death. Whether you live uh, 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 one year or whether you live 101 years, it's still not long. Job said it this way. He said, man that is born of a woman is a few days. I want you to know something. Everybody that's walking this earth was born of a woman. That's why he said it. He didn't say born of a man. He didn't say made in a machine. He said born of a woman. Now watch this. They can take... The, the semen from a man. But that semen has to be injected or implanted 
into a woman. They have not figured out how to create life without a woman. So we still man born of a woman. Now, if you on here and you wasn't born of a woman, somebody lied to you. If you are categorized as a human being, you are born of a woman. If if listen, listen to me, listen to me. Uh, and and because of that. The Bible is saying that a few days, in other words, God is saying you got a short time to be here. Not only that, and, and not only do you have a short time to be here, that short time is full of trouble. Full means to be aboundingly satisfied with. In other words, your, your little short life and my little short life is going to be a Bound is going to be abounding with trouble, satisfied with trouble, overflowing with trouble, abundantly with trouble. Ooh trouble. What is trouble? In other words, you're going to be overflowing and, uh, and, 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 and satisfied with agitation, overflowing and satisfied with excitement that has a negative connotation to it. Overflowing and satisfied with raging and turmoil. Overflowing and satisfied with trembling and trepidation, which that's a big word I had to look that up, which is a feeling of fear and agitation. Uh, uh, trepidation is a feeling that something bad is going to happen. I think we used to call it, I think we called it worry. So your, your life is going to be filled with the, with the fear of something always happening to you. Your life is going to be a feel uh, with the fear that something with what's going on with you. So, so not only is it short, but it's abounding and satisfied with agitation, abounding and satisfied with raging and turmoil and trembling and, and trepidation, which is a feeling of fear or agitation that something is about to happen to you. I'm talking about you don't have long. Thank God for Jesus Christ that I don't have long to put up with short lives. I don't have long to put up with agitation. I don't have long to put up with raging and turmoil. I don't have long to feel fear on every hand. Thank God for Jesus Christ. I'm talking about you don't have long. I know there's some young folks probably looking at this sermon now and say, well, it's his mustache is gray and his and his and his beard is gray and and his hair is a little thin on the top. I'm telling you, it's thick to me. I'm calling it as what is as is. What's not as is is as if it were what it, I wanted to be. Amen. But gray everywhere. The boy's wearing glasses now, and 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 he don't move as fast as 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 he used to move. But I want you to know that I don't care if you're two or two hundred and two. You don't have long. And I want you to know that young folks are leaving here faster than old folks. Woo the surety of death. You can't count on being a doctor. You can't count on being a dentist. You can't count on being a businessman. You can't count on being rich. You can't count on staying poor. But you can count on the fact that you don't have long and death is sure for and quick for us all. You don't have long running around here treating folk like a dog. You don't have long thinking you better than somebody else. You don't have long shooting people of color down in the street like a dog. You don't have long putting them at a disadvantage. You don't have long. -wee. What God is saying, you will not get away. Whatever you do on earth, you shall account for when you come face to face with God. So if I were you, I would get my business straight with God through his son, Jesus Christ, because you don't have long. When you stand before God, being white won't mean nothing. Being black won't mean nothing. Being brown won't mean nothing. Being woo the only thing that's going to mean something is your relationship with the son, Jesus Christ, and the fact that you use Christ in, in your heart to change, to allow God to change you through the power of the Holy Spirit to turn you from your lying and from your stealing and from your hatred and from our wicked ways to his way. I'm telling you, you and I don't have long to get this right. So we see that, that, 
that Job makes it clear. Not only that, uh, uh, he goes to the second verse. He says, Job uh, 1 and 2 says, uh, he cometh forth. Talking about man, talking about man coming forth like a flower, uh, and, 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 and to come forth like a flower, he, he's talking about to come forth with purpose. A flower comes forth with purpose. God's purpose for a flower is to, is to, is to beautify the earth and, and to feed, uh, the bees and to feed, uh, those animals that fly around and, and the birds that get, that whose food is the nectar and the sweetness of the flower in the and and and, and but and so 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 when you when you and I come here we come forth with a purpose and let me tell you something you don't have long to figure out what your purpose is and I, I you can read the whole Bible but I'm gonna get to that quick if you go to Ecclesiastes the last chapter somewhere in there you, it is written that where it says Solomon said I have had all the women I have had Hundreds of wives I have had, hundreds of concubines I have had, all the gold and all the silver I have had, all the clothes and all the Cadillacs, talking about the talking about the camels and all uh, the sports cars, talking about the horses and all the trucks, talking about the music. He said, I've had everything that a man could want. And I'm telling you, in my old age, on my way to the grave, on my way for my body to go down and my soul to go up, on my way to recollecting what God has done for me, let me tell you, the the whole duty of man is to serve God. The whole duty of man is to praise God. He said, let me tell you something. When you live in this life, when you live in this life, your only sole purpose is to praise and worship God all the days of your life. That's the duty. That's the purpose of man is to praise God. The grass praises God because it keeps growing. Every time we cut it, it's still trying to reach heaven. Even the weeds still growing, still trying to reach heaven. The trees are still growing, still trying to reach heaven. The waves go hundreds of feet in the air trying to reach God. Let me tell you, the only animal that's not trying to reach God, the only part of creation that's not trying to reach God is the man who he made, whom he made higher than any other creature. And I'm telling you, your purpose is to worship and praise and serve God all the days of your life. That is the whole duty of man. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what economic situation you might find your, yourself in. Your duty is to praise God. If you're in the ditch, you got to praise him. If you're poor, you got to praise him. If you're rich, you got to praise him. If you're black, you got to praise him. If you're white, you got to praise him. Why? That is the duty of man, and you don't have long to do that down here. Praise the Lord. Not only does he come forth like a flower, Praise God. Not only does he, does he have purpose, but he is cut down. He flees like a shadow. You don't have long. Uh, uh, shadow, shadow, when he flees, and the shadow are just memories. Sister Gilbert, Sister Gilbert is slowly fading into memories. Going on two years now, she's slowly fading into memories, but cherish memories. Let me tell you, the, 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 the hurt is subsiding in the flesh, and, 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 and the memories are, 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 are not as often, uh, the memories are, is not as consistent because Sister Gilbert is there and I'm still here and, and, and God is healing and, and when you heal the, the memories are, become precious uh, the moments become precious and the pain becomes less why? Because she has fleed as a flower. She has been cut down in the shadow of the shadow of memories. Uh, the shade that I rest in in my memories. The shadow uh, uh, and the memories are the prote are as protection for me to remember my wife and how, and how God used my wife to make me the man to, that I am today. Shadow is symbolic of uh, transitory life. In other words, she has trans uh, transitioned from here to there. Let me tell you, when, when you leave here, uh, there will only be memories of you. And after a few years, the memories will become less. And after a few more years, the memories become, they won't ever leave you, but you won't think about them as often as you did when it happened. I'm telling you why, because it's a shadow. 
Woo! That flees. The life is a shadow. The memories it are become shadows of life that once was and that continuous not. In other words, uh, their purpose has been fulfilled and they have departed out of this life. Woo Here's some things I want you to remember. What Job is trying to say to us that things about death, we have an account. Uh, here in, 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 in Job uh, 14, 1 and 2, we have an account of man's life on this word that you don't have long. That is, the first thing we have an account of is that it is short. The second thing we have an account of is that it is sorrowful. It is full of trouble. And the third thing we have uh, an account of is that it is Stinted, stinted. I looked that word up. Stinted mean, or stint, or stinted mean that it, uh, it it won't last forever. You have an appointed time in this life. And let me tell you, you you're gonna live as long as God will allow you to live. But that number has already been numbered. That mark has already been made. We are moving toward the mark of becoming a shadow. We are moving toward the mark of becoming a flower that has been cut down in the body and transitioned in the spirit. Woo I'm telling you, you don't have long. This is an account of man's death that it puts a final period on this life. Sister Gilbert has nothing else to do with this life to which she shall not return again. Those that leave will never come back here like that. That 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 it hides us from the calamities of life. No more pain. No more back pain. No more medicine. No more tears. No more sorrow. It hides us uh, from those things in this life. And it also destroys the hope in this life. There's no hope of seeing your grandbabies no more. There's no hope of seeing your husband down here. There's no hope of be, having the ability to vote again. There's no hope in seeing the grass grow. There's no hope in seeing the flowers grow. There's no hope in seeing the rain fall. There's no hope in seeing the rainbow. Why? Because you where the rainbow is. Woo-wee. You don't have long. And that destroys the hope. And it sends away your business in this life. And it keeps us in darkness concerning our relationships in this life. She's in darkness when it comes to her husband now. Former things are forgotten. She's in darkness when it comes to her grandbaby, her G-baby, that she would throw us all at the house for. She's in darkness when it comes to her firstborn, Alexis. She's in darkness when it comes to Colton. She had to leave them in the hand of the Lord, just like her mama left her in the hand of the Lord. That business, that concern for those that are here, that is past and that is over and that is Formal care that is not a care now. Ooh, I'm telling you, you and I don't have long. Uh, James said it this way. James says, uh, talking about you don't have long. James says, go to now. Uh, 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 go to now means that it is in James 4.13, I'm sorry. says, go to now. Uh, and, and what that means, that means it is imperative. Uh, and imperative means you got to do this. Imperative means that, that if you're going to, if you're going to uh, properly lead, uh, you, you got to understand what God is saying here. Uh, if you're going to properly lead, you got to come and you got to look at this thing now. Ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go in such a city and continue therein for a year and buy and sell. Uh, 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 whereas, uh, uh, ye know, 14 says, whereas, and listen to me, we make plans, but God is saying you don't have long because one day the plans you make will never be uh, uh, carried out. I remember that Sister Gibble left here on, on, on December the 26th at 12.30 a.m. in the morning, and, 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 and there, were, there were Christmas presents. There's a whole bunch of them that she never got a chance to wear. I remember these leather jackets. She even had one that was that was lavender purple. And that was light lavender purple. And she had a few more that were beautiful uh, clothing. And I had bought her some, some things. And I had given her some things. And her family had given her. Her children had given her some things. But those things were left behind. There's going to be some stuff you never get a chance to wear. There's going to be some stuff that still got the new smell on it. Why? Because you don't have long. And you don't know when your long is going to be. 
good God Almighty. So, so uh, James 4 uh, and, and, and 14 says, Where is ye know not what shall be on tomorrow? For what is your life? It is a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. In other words, God said you don't have long. Watch this now. For that ye, and here's what he's saying. Uh, the first thing we got to do in this life, and to un after we understand we don't have long, is we got to get a new attitude. You got to get a new attitude. You're not going to be for here forever. So stop treating people like a dog. Stop being white thinking you got it like that because you don't. You just as jacked up as anybody else. And based on what the world sees with you right now, you are the worst low-life dog in the world. But let me tell you, the only thing that saves you in my book is that I know Percy Gilbert and Percy Gilbert is just as low as you Percy Gilbert is just as bad as you but the difference between you and me now is that I've been called of God I've been called out of my wrong into God's right and the only difference between you and I is God I'm not talking about all my white brothers because I'm not talking about all my black brothers. I'm talking about if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you are a low life gutter rat Dog, lower than a snake, lower than a dog. You are worthless in the sight of God. But he sent his son to die for you, to cause you to come from what you are to what he would have you to be. And if you don't treat people right in this life, you shall answer to God. You just keep killing black folk. You just keep taking advantage of minorities. Minorities, you just keep doing the evil that you do. And God saying to all of us, I don't care what color you are. Every last one of you wrong for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And none of you got long to answer to me. I find comfort in knowing that when you shoot the 13 year olds down, when you shoot the black folk down, when you take advantage of us in this world, I got confidence in God. My, 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 my anger is kindled by the grace of God. My anger is kindled by the word of God. My anger, anger is kindled by the spirit of God. And I'm going to wait on the Lord because I want him to save you. But if you don't change your wicked way, you think COVID was something. You think the Twin Towers was something. You just wait. There's something greater coming to us to make us get on our knees. Why? Because you don't have Long. I'm telling Trump, you don't have long. I'm telling Biden and Harris, you better do right where you are. You don't have long. I'm telling the governors of every state, you don't have long. I'm telling them low-life police officers and low-life police chiefs, you don't have long to get this right. Because God is coming and vengeance shall be with him. And if you ever repented from your wicked way, you will meet him in a way that you wish you never been born. I'm going to wait on him to save you, but if you refuse to be saved, I shall see you destroyed by the God of heaven and earth because you won't live forever because none of us have long. Watch this. For they need to bring they need to bring this to a close here. For ye all to say, here we say we we're gonna go and we're gonna do this on tomorrow and we're gonna make money in this city. He said, for what your life is, you ain't got long. It's even a vapor. You all to say, if the Lord will, if the Lord will, I shall live and do this and that. Some of us so some of us so arrogant. He said, "For what you ought to say is, the, I, the, if the Lord will, I would do this and that." But now you rejoice in your boasting about what you're going to do. Boasting is an empty, braggart talk. In other words, you're bragging about life, insolent and empty assurance. You can't wake yourself up. How you gonna do something when you can't wake yourself up? Ooh -wee. Good God Almighty, which which a uh, 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 bragging, a uh, uh, boasting has a trust in its own power and own resources, and shamefully despises and violates the divine laws of human rights. Bragging says, "I'm here and you're there." Bragging says, "I woke myself up this morning." Bragging says, "I get put breath in my mouth." Bragging says, "I'm gonna live forever." Bragging says, "I'm something." That's what white folk do in this country right here. They white folks say, "I'm something," and anything that's not white. 
is nothing. Let me tell you, living in a gutter, live worse off than you do, but they're going to brag about being white. Let me tell you something. The only thing I brag on is not being black. I don't brag on being black. I know black folk. They're just as jacked up as white folk, but I brag on being a child of God. I brag on that God has brought me from my wicked and evil ways just like I used to be. Let me tell you, if you're not saved, I used to be the same way. That's why I have patience with you. Because God have patience with me. But I tell you what, I ain't got long to have patience with you. Woo-wee. Because I'm going to be out of here not too long from now. You don't have long is the message that is here. But let's, let's move on. Now, 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 now here's another thing. Uh, the, the, we, 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 need to, we need to understand a couple things here. First thing, the surety of death. The second thing, thing is that we need to have a new attitude. What is that new attitude? That new attitude says you ought not say what you're going to do. That new attitude says that if it's the Lord's will, you need to understand that God wakes you up. You don't wake yourself up. You need to understand that God blessed you with that degree. Who gave your eyes to see, to read, and study? Who gave your mind to to be able to understand. God did it. Who gave you the strength to get up? God did it. How are you going to get up and tell somebody how you pull yourself about boost up? Are you stupid? Are we stupid? Hey, man, that sounds better. That sounds like I got all the sense that you don't know. We are ignorant and stupid if we don't have the word of God working in us. So, so, so the surety of death, we're going to die and we need to get a new attitude about life. We need to understand that God makes us, gets us up every morning and allows us to carry out our plans. We don't boast without God. We, we don't boast about what we're going to do. We say if the Lord is willing, if you make plans and you don't say the Lord is willing, he goes down and he said, that's evil. He said, that's evil. That is evil. Such rejoicing, all such rejoicing is evil. How you gonna brag about something and you ain't nothing? Woo! God Almighty, somebody just got mad on them. So, so, so we need to get a new attitude. We need to let, we need, the attitude is that God giveth and we enjoyeth. And one day we're gonna be taken away so we don't have long. That's a new attitude. We also need to understand that we, we all have an appointed time. Your time has been set. You don't have long. You don't know. Now watch this. Sin that his days, Job 14 and 5, sin his days are determined and the number of his months are, are with thee, Lord, and has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And my time for, 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 for being on this earth is, 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 is sometime today, I will not live past today. If it's, if it's 100 years, I will not live past 100 years. God has appointed a time. Someone said, well, how can that be right? You know, some babies die in the womb. Some babies die at, 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 before they five. Some, some folk die in their teens. Some folk die in their twenties. And That's God's business. The only thing you need to be worried about is your business with God. Woo! That's what's wrong with folk now. Always in somebody else's business. Then somebody else is on their way to heaven. They're not perfect. On their way to heaven and you in their business on your way to hell. You need to get your business straight with God. Don't worry about my business. Just pray for my business. Good God Almighty. Why? Because none of us have long. I need to tell the rich man today, you ain't got long to spend that money. I need to tell the whole monger today, you ain't got long to be chasing the women. I need to take the other whole monger, them women, you ain't got long to be chasing the men. I need to tell the, the, those, those that are stealing, you ain't got long to be stealing. You ain't got long to be gambling. You ain't got long to be hating. You ain't got long to be lynching black folk. You ain't got long to be shooting black folk. I'm telling you, Trayvon Martin, it was a devastating thing, but Trayvon Martin is in heaven with God and eternity is here. Let me tell you, what look, what look bad ain't so bad. If, if you are in Christ Jesus, we all going to leave here some kind of way, but it ain't if you're shot by a low-life, gutter-rat dog police officer they, because he hadn't repented from his wicked ways. I used to, they, somebody said, you shouldn't be calling me. I used to be a low-life, gutter-rat dog, and because I used to be one, I can talk about the low-life, low gutter-rat dog. I don't care what color you are. If you don't have Christ in your life, you are a low-life, gutter-rat dog. Now, worth the bullet that somebody would put in you because sin has done that to us and the message is today don't you leave here like you were born because you don't have long to get this fixed he said watch this he said job 14 and 6 says turn from him that he may rest amen god's turning from him that he god's taking the life out of that we may rest till he shall accomplish as a highland we listen to me highland says you're on the clock for so long Woo! Howland said that you only live for so long. Job 14 said, but a man dies and wastes away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. Where is he? You can't see him anymore. I can't say she's giving anymore. Not like that. Praise God. But she is with God in heaven. 
One day where I'm going to be. One day I will be a ghost. I will be a memory. I will be a shadow to my children. I will be a shadow to my family. But they, all of us, have been, everybody that came, every generation that came before us are shadows now. And then one day you're going to be a shadow. Man that born is woman, it is short and it is troublesome. And verse 11 says, he says, uh, as the waters fail the sea and the flood decays and dries up, that's, so, so does man lie down and rise up. One day we're going to lie down and not rise up again. Why? Because we don't have long till the heavens be no more. Uh, they shall not awake <clears throat> nor be raised uh, out of their sleep. If a man die, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time? I'm going to wait until my change comes. I need you to know every man that is born of a woman got a change coming. And that change is saying you don't have long down here. Just like the, 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 the cocoon, to, uh, the ugly cocoon turns into a butterfly. One of these days we all going to fly away in Jesus Christ. And one of these days all of us that don't claim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we are not going to fly away. We're going to be buried. The Bible Bible said that when Lazarus died and that, 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 that the angels of God came and got him and flew him on into the bosom of Abraham and the next the next uh, uh, verse says that the rich man died and was buried. I need you to know today you're going to leave here one way or the other but are you going to leave flying or you're just going to be buried and, wait and open your eyes up in hell or open your eyes up in the bosom of Abraham it's going to be one of the two. The message today is I'm concerned about both of them, I want you to go to heaven, but if you if you refuse to allow God to come into your heart and take away your racism and take away your hatred, you white preachers, y'all preaching that stuff and ain't living none of it. I'm not talking about all of you, but it's enough of you. Listen, if the white folk would do right, that are Christians. If the black folk would do right, that are Christians. If the brown folk would do right, that are Christians. If the yellow folk would do right, that are Christians. Reverend Chris Will preached a sermon this morning saying if my people that are called by my name, not black folk, but that are called by my name, not black folk, not that are called by my name. If y'all would do right while you're there, because none of you got long, then I would heal the land. This world is jacked up like it is because we got jacked up white preachers and jacked up Christians and jacked up black preachers and jacked up black Christians and jacked up brown preachers and jacked up brown Christians and jacked up. If we would do right. No, we act like we're going to live forever, making plans. But the message is, we don't have long. I need to bring this to a close. Listen to me. Listen to me. We're not going to rush through this. It's gonna, there's going to be a part two. It's too much good stuff here. Uh, good word here for that. So let's, let, us, let us finish this. We all have an appointed time. Death is sure. We, death is sure, and because death is sure, we need to get a new attitude. A new attitude says that tomorrow is not promised to me. God has already set limits to my time that's down here. So we need to be about God's business. Let me tell you, you can, you can build the longest bridge, the greatest bridge, the most spectacular thing that you can find in this world. But let me tell you, you ain't got long to enjoy that. And let me tell you, what you did in this world and for this world is not going to count for nothing. Okay. What you have done for Christ is going to count for everything. Now, if you built that bridge for God, ooh, with love in your heart. If you built that building for God, with love in your heart. If you, Whatever you do for Christ is the only thing that's going to go with you when you leave here. You Listen to me. Listen to me. Here's what goes with you. Your love or your hate, it goes with you when you leave here. And those that go here in love through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, heaven is their home. For those that go here in hate, Hell is your home. Well, you got a home. But let me tell you something. I had, I had a home, but I had to change the addresses. You have to turn from your wicked ways and repent that you might change your address that you are headed to. He said, listen, listen. He said, he said, uh, uh, you don't have long. He said that the psalmist, uh, Job says, 15 says, look here. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to do the work of thine hands. In other, in a, to, thou would have a desire to do the work of thine hands. In other words, when, when God calls you, I don't care your name, Trump. You ain't nobody. You live and die. Folk worried about him running in 24. Who says he's going to be alive in 24? Does he know something we don't know? Right here, he said Trump ain't got long either. And at 70 some years old, shit, that boy need to get his business straight. And I don't care if you're two years old, you need to get your business straight. God 
is the creator. And God has set a time limit on us all. And his message to us today is you don't have long. Here's the last thing he says. He says, he says here, verse 16 says, For now thou numbers my step. God knows how many steps we, we have. A number, we have a certain amount of steps that we're going to take in this life. God knows what it is that has already been set. Doest thou not watch over my sin? Oh, God got to Let me tell you, not only does God have a number of steps, God knows when to sin. God knows your, your ways. And he watch over that sin. And he's keeping a record of that sin. You can take that to the bank. Mm -hmm. If that sin had been cast from as far as the east is from the west through his son, Jesus Christ, washing the blood and allow the uh, word of God to come into your heart through the power of the Holy Ghost and living out your life and you're changing. Let me tell you something. God got to watch over that sin and you will answer. White folks, oh, yeah, y'all going to answer. I ain't worried about you. You can kill me. You can do what you want to me. I'm just dead. I'm dead like Martin Luther King. I'm dead like J.F. Kennedy. And guess what? You ain't got to be shot to die. You're going to die. I'm, all, I'm a dead man walking in this flesh. It's coming. Why? Because we don't have long. But somebody got to tell you the truth. Black folks, shoot, don't be beating up on white folks. Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let me tell you something. Don't spend your time talking about white folks when you just as messed up as they are. Sin has done the same thing in us as it has done in them. Remember, we used to be in charge uh, centuries ago. And guess what? We're on the bottom now. Why? Because we didn't do right. White folks don't realize if, if, if God doesn't come back, there's going to be a power change. And they can't stop it. They can't stop it. You can't stop a power change when God is changing power. You can't do it. You don't have the power to do that. Why? You don't have long. With that being said, let's close. Thank you for those extra few minutes. Let's close. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, not believe in Trump, God have mercy on the people that believe in that kind of foolishness. Listen to me. Not believe in a man. How you going to believe in something that dies and leaves you all alone? God will never die. God sent his son and his son gave his life. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have heard the word of God and you believe that word in your heart, and you can feel the spirit of God reviving you to life, all you have to do is confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God and that he came and died, suffered and died, and God raised him with all power on the third day for your sins and for the sins of the world. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So now that you believe that, all you do is confess your sin, confess your faults and your wrong, and ask God to forgive you and ask him to come into your heart and live out his righteousness through your life. And he will, because whether you're saved or not, you don't have long. Whether you're heaven bound or not, you don't have long. Whether you're rich or not, you don't have long. Whether you're black or white or anything in between, you don't have long. If you're on here and you don't know Christ and the pardon of your sins, and you want salvation, type in need to talk. Someone will get right with you as soon as I get off the phone. I mean, as soon as I get off, as soon as the Lord allows me to sit myself down. Okay? Need to talk. If you want salvation, because you don't have long to do this now. The day you hear the word of the Lord, and, and, and you feel the Holy Ghost uh, tugging on you, and you know that what's being said is true in your heart, it's time to come. Put type in need to talk, and if you need prayer, type in need prayer. And if you if you're going to uh, want to join Great Friendship Christian Church uh, family, just type in I'm interested. Uh, Lord's willing, hopefully we'll be going back on August the first. We're going to keep things in, but we have a date. We thank God for that. So if you want salvation, need to talk. If you need prayer, put need prayer. Somebody will call you, and it'll be per it'll be uh, uh, private. And if you're interested in joining Great Friendship Christian Church, uh, uh, just put I'm interested. You don't 